Hey everybody, let me tell you how to be a New Zealander by teaching you all some New Zealand words. So, today's word will be cuz. That's cuz. Draw for cousin, but you pretty much use it to call someone your bro. So it can be like, hey cuz. Alright, cool. So this was on August 5th, and I do know that this is only the first part but I've seen other people play this game till the end and trust me guys when I say that this game deserves way more attention. So please do check it out if you can. Alright, thanks for watching everybody. See ya. Gamers, I want to introduce you to a game that our boy Draxer suggested to me. He was like, he, he wrote me like a, an essay pitching this game to me. Like, do you... Do you see this? <laughs> Look at that. He wrote an essay suggesting this game. So, I mean, I gotta try it. So we're gonna try a game called Horus. Draxer cares, exactly. We'll give it a hot shot. It'll be fine, probably. Let's try out Horus. Hmm. I know nothing about this game other than what Draxer wrote. <gasps> Detroit become human! one just like Annabelle <gasps> We're getting hecka shipped What's up, Angel Boo Boo? Hope you had a good day. What are you doing? Get the door! I'm smoking cigarette. I'm tired of your smoking. Mm, I love cigarettes. Fine, I'll get it. I am Connor. Oh god, we're Chonky Connor. Nice. Hello, father. I'm doing it. Clap. Clap. Thank you. And so, I was born. The first people I remember seeing were the old man, the old lady, and their daughter, Heather. After they'd said hello, the old man powered me down so he could install some software. I could tell they were nice people. The old man didn't give me a silly voice or stupid personality. And the old Aww. lady didn't dress me like a clown. Oh shit, no! Although hey man, for some reason, came for your Heather YouTube playthroughs. Corpse Party is still my fave BTW. Say because you're a real cool dude. Aww. Thanks for being you, man. Thank you very much, man or woman. Appreciate that. Enjoy your robots. They didn't like me. Once I had time to get used to walking, the old man asked me to dash from one end of the room to the other. You want me to dash, old man? If I must. <laughs> oh my god, the animation looks so good. Oh. 
that animation looks so good! Next, the old man spent a couple of hours building some wooden platforms. He said he wanted me to jump up them. But I must admit, I was scared. It wasn't until I saw Heather and her mother happily climbing up them, that I decided it might be okay. Aww, wholesome. It's okay. This is cute! I'm already in love with it. I wish this little robot the best of all the walk. I said walk, didn't I? The old man then rearranged the platforms. He told me to try to reach the other end of the room without touching the floor. <gasps> Heather said, the floor's made of lava. <gasps> but when I smiled at her, she just frowned and looked away. Oh. The old lady arranged some pillows and blankets. She said it was in case I fell, but I think she just wanted it to look more like lava. Cute. But why does Heather look away? Heather, don't be like that. Also problematic five, thank you. As well as angel cakes. When I reached the other side, the old man just smiled and said, that'll do. For now. You're welcome. Begin. Be a bold and venture to be wise. Chapter 1. Learning to walk. Hi, Milky. Also, select a monkey. Thank you. <gasps> That's the cigarette smoker. My Little Poners? Turkums. A couple of days after those first lessons, the family had a big meal, and I was introduced to everyone else. The professor was the old man's brother. He was very quiet, and always seemed to just kind of stare at me. He had lived with the old man for five years. The house was so huge they barely saw each other. He preferred instead to stay in his room, leaving everything up to his butler, Mr. Deck. As he insisted everyone call him, although the professor always called him Anton. For a while, he called me the yellow bastard. But the old man made him stop, as he thought it sounded racist. Mr. Silton was the old man's driver. Before he worked here he'd gotten in with some bad people and was the driver in a post office robbery. Whoa. Although it all went wrong for some reason. Mr. Silton showed me a video of his band. I'm sure some people must like it, but I just found it terrifying. Then there was Alice. She was the cook. She was a nice old lady. When she was younger she had been a TV chef. Then, years later she had a small part in Coronation Street. Mr. Silton said, before she worked for the old man, Alice was quite a hoarder. She kept old newspapers and bicycles. And something about a poo, in a shoebox. Oh. The next morning, the old man gathered everyone together, to show them what I was capable of. What else does he do? asked Mr. Silton. The old man smiled. He can help around the house. Could he help me with my newspaper collecting? asked Alice. I'm not sure that's a good idea, said the old lady, but he can do all sorts of jobs. Yeah, said Mr. Silton, shove a stick up his ass and he can do Dick's job. <laughs> now now, said the old man. We have company pointing to some important looking people. <gasps> the Two president! Men, both called Gary, set up what the old man referred to as lasers. He said again, I should try to get from one end of the room to the other, but I shouldn't be worried, as I had a special chip which meant no matter how damaged I was, I couldn't die. He said it was like infinite lies in a video game. But when he realized I didn't understand, he said he would explain another time. Whoa. Like a video game? Cool. <gasps> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Bye. 
Everybody clapped. Except the important looking men. Not exactly a cold calculated killer, is it? Said the man in black. The man in grey laughed. What kind of artificial intelligence was that? He asked. Move right, unless there's something in the way. Okay, okay, said the old man. He turned to me and whispered, they're going to make it quite a bit tougher. But I'm sure you'll be fine. Okay. I can do it for you, old man friend. Oh. <laughs> Boris 2 is at it again. Okay, okay. Horus, we are, oh gosh, the best robot in the world. Okay, check this. Okay. Okay. If there's one thing my mom taught me, it's to keep trying until Dad says to stop. The guys then rearranged the room one last time. The old man smiled. Now, now, there's no need to look so glum, he said. I'm still happy with everything you've done today. So this time, I was determined to do him proud. Aw. I'm gonna do him so proud. Look up. Look down. Let's go. Oh, God. Okay. The old man's friends actually seemed quite happy when I made it through. We might have a winner after all, said the man in black. It's no kill bot 3000, but you can almost see the fire in its eyes. <gasps> kill bot A couple of three. days later, the old lady said she had a surprise for me. My own room. She also wanted to play me some music. I wasn't sure after what Mr. Silton had shown me. As if music wasn't amazing enough, the old lady then bought me a television set. I couldn't believe what I saw, I watched everything I could. Comedy, drama, horror, sci-fi, anything anyone wanted to watch I would happily watch with them. Then one day, the old man set up a small box, he plugged some cables into the television, and said, this is what I meant, when I said video games. I played games at every chance I could. I took on everyone. Yeah. I was unstoppable. I had enjoyed music, film, and television. But to me, video games really were the highest art form. Hell yeah, brother! <gasps> Yo, I'll play table tennis. Hit me up. Let's do it. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. Oh, oh, come on, old man. You got, got nothing. Thank you, Connor, very much, by the way. Also, an unorthodox cat who says, Hey, Dad, three months, but I've actually been with you since 20... Fuck! Since 2012. Uh, a crappy keep up good work. Thank you very much, Boo Boo Bear. Also, Kawaii Hentai. Hentai cannot be Kawaii. It'll only be Opai. Ugh. Also, ugh. Kundo Hoy and Slackjaw Monkeys. I already said that earlier, but thank you. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good saying, actually. <laughs> Dude, yes. Dude, get the freaking points and get the freaking respect. This is all you need. Respect from the old man who bought you in video game skills. Hell yeah. Bam! Yeah! Take that, old man! Heather's birthday was a couple of months later. Her mum and dad had bought her a camera and arranged a day up by the sea so that Heather could take some photos 
although I really don't think she wanted any pictures of me. When the old man asked the professor if he wanted to go, he frowned and said, I can't believe you want to spend time with that thing, it could destroy the world. I wasn't sure what he meant, but the old man just smiled and said, that's what you said about the Game Boy. Huh? Anton, how about you? I don't think so, said Mr. Deck. The last time I got in that car, Barry crashed us into a branch at Woolworths. I never would have gone into Woolworths of my own accord. The old man explained that the car was old and the brakes had failed, but Mr. Deck was having none of it. So Mr. Silton drove, and Alice came along for the fresh air. Bunny. I enjoyed being outside. Although, the old lady kept telling me to be careful of the rickety old walkways. It felt like she was telling me off, but I think she was just concerned. As the old man and I stood on the clifftops, I could see something in the distance. I wasn't sure what it was, so I asked the old man. He said it was a battleship that had sunk in the 1940s. But he looked so sad when he spoke about war. I didn't see what happened, but the metal platform Heather was climbing on had collapsed. <gasps> She was safe. Even if the rocks she was on looked very dangerous. The tide was rising, and we didn't know how long the Coast Guard was going to be. So I offered to climb down and get her. The old man agreed, but said I should be careful, as Heather doesn't have infinite lives, like I do. That's true. <sighs> okay, Heather. Coming to save you. Even if you're a little robo racist. Heather Heather was unconscious, and her leg was broken. So I picked her up as gently as I could. I decided it would be best if I didn't run the rest of the way. Oh god. You know, I actually don't know the limitations of this game. I don't know if she could actually die, so I'm really worried. We'll see. Okay, we're- Hey, I think I'm a hero, though! Are you gonna stop being a freaking racist now? An ambulance had arrived by the time I had made it back to the cliff top. The medics made sure Heather was okay, and then took her off to hospital. A few days later, we all went to see how she was doing. She was fine. But would have to wear the cast for a couple of months. Hero! Aww! She realizes we're, a, we're, we, we're worthy of being considered a people, even if we're a robo-people. Yay! Hero robot! Hero bot! Once Heather got to know me, we became good friends. Aww. We enjoyed the same films and TV. She was also annoyingly good at some of my favorite games. <laughs> After a while, she became very interested in how I worked. Soon she knew as much about me as the old man did. If not more. That's cute. We spent the next couple of months visiting other countries, as when it came to teaching me things, the old man always liked to pick interesting locations. 
He had explained the basics of mathematics to me at the Great Pyramid of Egypt. Taught me history in the dead of night, surrounded by mysterious giant stones. And even showed me science in action high up in a hot air balloon. I kind of love cigarettes. This is why I was surprised when the old man took me to a restaurant. It was nice, but it seemed very somber, compared to the previous grand locations. He said he just wanted to chat, and this was nice and quiet. Plus it was his favorite place to eat. We talked about life, the universe, Douglas Adams, everything really. When I asked him, why were we here? I know why this did song. He, exist? he just smiled and said, life is like a game, just don't expect to be finished anytime soon. When I looked puzzled, he said, well, everyone should have a purpose. So I asked him, what's my purpose? He thought for a bit, then said, so you want to be a real boy? Which just confused me even more. <laughs> Eventually the old man said, for now, I want you to help clean things around the house. I must have looked unimpressed. As he then said, Okay. I want you to clean one million things. It didn't sound like the meaning of life. But I suppose you've got to start somewhere. Huh. A man can't have everything. Where would he put it? Chapter 2. Learning My Purpose The next day, the old man said he wanted to install some more software, so he powered me down. When I came to, he said Mr. Silton had a joke for me, and that I should pull his finger. I don't think I got the joke, so the old man powered me down again. This time when I pulled Mr. Silton's finger, I got the joke, but it wasn't very funny. The old man Tell then explained that he had it. installed a special chip which allowed <clears throat> me to clean away anything that was broken. He said it also tells me how many things are nearby, and how many smaller things are in a bigger thing. It all sounded very complicated, but he said all I really had to do was pause, and it would bring up all the information I needed. He then said he wanted me to find and clean all of the items in the room. He told me there would be some chains to climb, but that would be nice and easy, as I just had to press up. He then finished by saying, when I had collected all the items, I should come back here. Okay, sir. Ooh. Fancy windows. Let's clean some junk. <gasps> it's just that easy. All right, we're the best robots in the heckin' planet. We've evolved from viewbots. The old man then asked the old lady Heather and I to follow him outside. I was happy too, as it was a lovely hot day. The old man said he was worried that Alice had been calling again. She had filled up a small barn with old bicycles and newspapers. Heather said, this would be a perfect chance to properly test my new powers. The old man thought for a second, then said, using the step-toe chip, I should find and clean at least 300 things. <laughs> when we explained to Alice what we wanted to do, she seemed scared. <laughs> but after the old lady kindly explained that, well, the barn was starting to smell. She said it would be okay. One last thing, said the old man. If you want to use a door, just push up. When I was about to enter the old barn, Mr. Silton said he had seen some mushrooms growing inside. He asked me to give him any that I found. He then winked, but I wasn't sure why. I wonder why. I know this song! It's from Sonic! Oh. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, 
Oh, this is from Crash Bandicoot. You're right. I'm sorry. My bad. Beethoven? No, I watched that movie a lot. The one with the dog? It, this is not from that movie. All junk cleared, gamers. <gasps> oh, or is it? Oh god, please don't murder me. I'm just a robot. I have gaming skills. Ugh. You can market me for fuck for Fortnite teaching. I think that's everything. Hey, 337, just had a one in front of that and we'll be. <gasps> Guys, speaking of, while I was getting my prescription, you know what fucking song came on during, like, the, you know, the Walgreens little, uh, intercom song thing? <laughs> We're no strangers to love. You know the rules, and so do I. And I was just like, geez, they rickroll you in your place of establishment? And she's like, you know, when he first sang this song when he was a young boy, when it was a long time ago, I was always thought his face never matched his voice. I'm just like, oh, you. <laughs> it was so funny. The old man was very happy with everything that I had cleaned. But I think Mr. Silton was even more happy with his mushrooms. He's gonna make some good pizzas. Or stuffed mushrooms. <gasps> Yo, I saw the box around that leaf sprite. It wasn't the days getting shorter, or the evenings getting colder. It was the falling leaves that really made me feel sad. As we watched the trees blowing in the breeze, the old lady said, the leaves must fall before the blossom comes. She had already explained the seasons to me, so for once, I actually understood. But it didn't make me feel any better. The old lady obviously heard enough of my moping, and said, Right, next week we're going to have a party. For some reason she insisted that we were all going to wear costumes. Heather was very excited and said, I've got some perfect ideas. Halloween? Yo! This is from that one movie. Hocus Pocus. Dog. terrifying. Everyone was dressed like someone else. I think I was meant to be some kind of pumpkin, it's as Charlie everyone Brown. kept shouting. It's the great pumpkin. Still, at least Mr. Silton was having fun telling everyone his joke. And I suppose Heather's costume was quite flattering. Is that Minecraft gold armor? <laughs> After what seemed like forever, everybody left, and things got back to normal. Heather was allowed to watch a scary film before she went to bed, but I had to help Alice and Mr. Deck clean up. To get you, I wasn't happy about this, but the old man said if I was quick, then I could watch the end of the film with them. I do want to watch the end of the film. Alice was vacuuming, and Mr. Deck was taking down the decorations, so I thought I should clean up the plates and glasses. Okay. Hello, Alice. Good luck. Hello, Mr. Deck. Good luck. I'm so proud of you, Mr. Deck. <gasps> hey, guys. Don't look. The ear-splitting sound was the fire alarm. As usual, Mr. Deck blamed Mr. Silton, saying he was probably smoking one of his jazz cigarettes. But then the professor appeared. He said that there was something burning in the kitchen. <gasps> Alice looked confused, saying that she hadn't cooked anything since the morning. We were all surprised when Mr. Deck opened the oven. Inside was a large black cloak and a slightly burnt pair of men's underwear. 
Suddenly the old lady burst in. She looked terrified. She kept shouting, there's someone on the roof. <gasps> when we went outside, it slowly became obvious that it was Mr. Silton. He was completely naked and playing his guitar. He shouted down, when I finish this song, I'm going to fly. Son shrooms! The old lady said, oh my god, I know this one, there's only about 30 seconds left. The old man then quickly turned to me and said, you know what to do. Hmm. I was taking a sip of water. I'm so sorry. I've got this. Uh, I will save you, my friend. I'm coming. Okay. Uh, oh God. No! Oh, no, no, no. Come on, go, go, go! By the time I had made it up to the roof, Mr. Silton was beside the edge. I tried to calm him down but he was acting even more bizarre than usual. <gasps> oh, shit. Yes! Hero bot! We're the best! After an hour or so, Mr. Silton was fine. He said he had eaten some bad magic mushrooms. Part of me wondered why he hadn't doubled in size. <laughs> Still, he was soon laughing and joking with the paranoid. <laughs> One of them said he looked like the world's worst clown. I don't think Mr. Silton liked that. So he told his own joke. But that just made the other paramedic call him Marshmallow Marso. I don't think he liked that either, but at least he was still in one piece. Just like the anime. <gasps> A month or so later, Heather and I were playing video games, when the old man said he wanted me to come outside. He said it had been a year since I had arrived, so he had a present for me. He placed the teddy bear high up on a wooden platform, he then told me I should try to pick it up. Of course, father. Uh, 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 father? Try as I might, I couldn't reach the teddy bear. However, I still don't understand what happened next.
my soul. Tell me about it. And what the fuck are we playing? Same beat of a Halloween song I used to listen to. What and why? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Ah, damn it, it didn't go. Ah, damn it. I'll Is sing I it later. Here? Was this heaven? It sort of looked like the basement bathroom. Shit. We're alive. But we're not dead anymore. Or are we Pinocchio now? I don't fucking know. It was the shoes the old man was going to give me. I thought I might as well put them on. They were just the right size. Hmm. The old man's hat fit me pretty good as well. I'm sure he wouldn't mind if I wore it. Yeah, he'd be okay with that. You wanna poop? Amazingly, the what? shoes allowed me to defy gravity. Or maybe it was the hat. Oh, shit! Yo! That's dope. That's dope as hell. The tie is so- yeah, I agree. When it's upside down like that? Oh my god. Wait a second, does he adjust it? Oh my god! The attention to detail is so fucking cute. Dude, so good. Nothing is beautiful from every point of view. Chapter 3, My World Ripped Apart. That's true. Chisel, this is super good. Nice. Thanks, Draxer, for recommending this game, my duder, if you ever hear this. Ah, oh, this is so cool. Okay. Gosh. Okay, anyway, but I was gonna I was going to say that song that was playing, it was like dun 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 that um, when I was a kid, my librarian used to play this every year around Halloween time, the song. It would go like, Halloween brings ghosts and goblins, scaring the people who open the door. Trick or treat gets you candy and apples. Go to the next house and get some more. So it was going like that whole time. I, I was thinking about my librarian as an, an elementary school kid. So. I really How like this. I been asleep? <gasps> Penis! Once. Yes. I was so confused. Where had everybody gone? Don't. Thank you for covering up. Hey, this one looks a bit more impressive. It's probably because he's got the, the stick out. This one looks like a sad boy. 
Wow. Wow. I was slightly scared. This was the first time I had been outside on my own. Why is this so loud comparatively? <laughs> like it just got really loud for some reason. <laughs> We were using our outside voices, that's why. I knew what I had to do. This had to be my purpose. I would clean a million things, so I could become a real boy. Aww. Whatever that meant. We gotta be a real boy, guys! Wholesome. Fuck! I need the garbage! It's mine! It's for my dead dad! Oh god. This, this, these, oh god. These lives are worth it. Every single one of these pain things, I need to feel it. I deserve this pain. I got one of them. What? Loot whore? Okay. First off, yes. Second off, I'm not a hunter. We're good, I guess. I found the old man's cat. She was fine, if a little confused. Ah! I was horrified. It looked like me. But it shambled around like something from the film we watched on Halloween. Shit. Scary. Okay. <laughs> I was just really curious if I could Goomba stomp and if I was wondering if I was failing at a bunch or not. We did it, team. We went back the other way. Oh, shit. <laughs> This was on purpose. It was to show how good I am at it now. See? I'm just so fucking talented. I can just do it twice. Which reminds me. I have something here for you. He rummaged around behind the cupboard. Then he continued saying, The old man wanted you to have this when you were old enough, but fate wouldn't allow it. He passed me a large box. It was empty. I thought about pretending to be excited, but the man said, Wait a minute. It's empty, isn't it? <laughs> he slumped back into his chair. I was robbed a few months ago. He said, almost in a whisper. It's strange, they took practically anything metal, but left loads of food and a brand new saxophone. Alright. This way. I wonder. Oh god. Alright. Oh, I... Super cool, man! Because <laughs> I was trying to do it like this! But I keep hitting a wall! Yeah! <laughs> hey! Found some more! Still more junk. I'll never find it. Here we go. Much pollution, guys! Alright, homies, listen up. Put our hands together, okay? Everyone, I want you to put your your hand against your screen, okay? Whatever screen you're using, put your hand in there, okay? On the count of three. On the count of three, we're gonna all all, all do this at the same time, okay? And we're gonna hoorah, okay? Count of three. What? Uh, hold on, there's a, a small boy walking up. What? Have you ever had a niche under your foot? 
Like Hankalaria. You keep scratching it, but it never stops itching. It's the worst. Yeah, uh, 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 yeah, we we can hoorah about that. I mean, uh, one, two, three. Ankle under our foot that we itch and it can't itch and feels bad. Yeah, hoorah! Okay, okay, now we'll, we'll do a second one. All right, one, two, three. Don't pollute, it's dumb. All right, cool. Good job, guys. I'm proud of us. I was confronted <gasps> by a lovable fat old dog. He almost looked pleased to see me. Suddenly, three men appeared holding large guns. Or at least two men and what looked to be a pregnant woman. Incredibly, it was Mr. <gasps> Susan. I thought you'd been shut down, he said. I mean, it's been years. I'm not really sure what happened, I replied. I then told him about me cleaning a million things. He laughed and said, nothing changes. He then Pull showed finger. me into what was surprisingly a really nice house. Please excuse my husband. <laughs> what is that pregnant shirt? Lady. I'm Edwina. But everyone calls me Eddie. I believe you know this idiot. And that's Preston. We've met. Said the small man, it was me that delivered that thing, remember? All you used to deliver was weed, mumbled Mr. Silton as he put the dog dish on the floor. Tell me about and, it. I was there that night, when this twat was off his face on mushrooms. Thanks for letting me and the dog stay, by the way. Yeah, well, we like the dog, said Mrs. Silton. And I suppose I've got you to thank for us meeting. What with you giving Barry those dodgy magic mushrooms? She pulled out an old photograph. It was one that Heather had taken the night I had saved Mr. Silton. Oh! Cute. It reminded me of everyone else, so I asked what had happened to them. Mr. Silton said Alice had a small place in the countryside. The professor had holed up in one of the old man's factories. Mr. Deck was, believe it or not, now a presenter on the only state television channel. And Heather and her mother lived on a government compound where they both worked. I asked about the old man, surprised that Mr. Silton hadn't mentioned him. He's... he's dead, said Mr. Silton. Sorry, I thought you knew. Anyway, said Mr. Preston, I thought you said that robot thing found the mushrooms for you, in that order's manky old barn. Mr. Silton looked embarrassed. Well, said Mrs. Silton, I guess we've got you to thank for getting us together then. Time for bed I think, said Mr. Silton, make yourself comfy, and we'll see you in the morning. <gasps> yes! Hello! Old man. Old man. Home is where the heart is. Chapter 4. Finding a way home. The next day, I thought it might be a good time to ask about the war. Judging by the look on everyone's faces. It wasn't. Well the war, said Mr. Silton. 
Barry, interrupted his wife. Barry! Can I see you for a minute? And dragged Mr. Silton out of the room. <gasps> leaving Bleeding me Barry with Mr. is Mr. Silton! He does mushrooms! So, now I'm curious. Was it actually possible to lose Mr. Silton and Heather when we were doing those, like, saving scenes and all that? Maybe, Smiley. Okay, that's a good way to describe it. Okay. I can roll with maybe, Smiley. I got maybe, Smiley, when I've confessed my love for someone before. Are you just gonna know the fact that the little girl was doing science in that cutscene? Alright, listen here. Science... Let me tell you about it. Science ain't even real. I have a theory, right? Fucking... Fucking science is just there to stop people from practicing magic. That's all. I need to get into the caves. And Bambi boy, can we please get a hoorah for the doggo? Hoorah, doggo! What do you mean everyone got to put together our hands for it? Put your hands together, hoorah, doggo! Yeah, there we go. Also, MJ Gowan, thank you very much. Oh, God. My grandma. Uh, what's up, sugar mama? How you doing? Sick, sick, sick. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chat, what do we want for dinner? I know what I want. Swiss steak. Heck yeah, Swiss steak and some mashed potatoes. Mmm. Hell yeah. Yeah, no, you never have it until I say we should have Swiss steak. Nah, that's fair. I feel that vibe. Alright, sounds good, boo boo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel you, I feel you. I get you. Yeah. I I'm actually in the middle of a stream right now, so I can't talk about like anything more that more so than something simple, sadly. Because you know how how it is when you you talking in front of like a couple of thousand people and shit. You feel me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah. I know that guy was such a butthole. Okay. Hmm. -hmm. Okay, I will unlock that front door. Okay. Sounds good. I love you too, boo. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, smooches. Okay, bye-bye. Good old grandma. <sighs> so, I'm having Swiss steak tomorrow for dinner chat. Are you jealous? You better be. As I walked through the old church ruins, I was surprised to hear Mr. Silton calling me. Oh, hey. He said he had forgotten to give me something, and the church's community hall would be the perfect place to try it out. As soon as we walked into the hall, Mr. Silton said he had a present for me. It was a pair of Atlas gloves. Mmm. They made me oh. think of the old blind man with the cat and his stolen Atlas gloves. Oh. I wonder if Mr. Silton knew how lucky he was to still have them with a glove thief around. Mr. Silton asked me to try the gloves on and start chucking things around. But not him. 
He was very clear about that. <coughs> Mr. Silton suggested we clean the hall. Of course I knew when he said we, he meant me. But I was happy to try out my new gloves. He said I should clear everything off of the basketball court and put the things on the floor either side. I fiddled with the settings for a bit, but when Mr. Silton saw I was having trouble, he fished a small manual out of the box. He explained that pressing down and X would pick a thing up. X would then throw the thing, and if I wanted to place it on the floor, I should again press down and X. He looked more and more confused as he read all this, but eventually he finished by saying, well, I hope that made more sense to you than it did to me. I don't know what that could even mean. Like, that makes no sense at all. <gasps> I got it. <gasps> oh, God. Jesus. Here you go, baby Jesus. Oh, God. Here you go, baby Jesus. I am holding down! You said I have to press down! No, you're lying! You said I could press down and it would gently press it down! You are lying, sir! Hmm. Okay, okay. Holding down, press sec. No! Stop throwing Jesus! Maybe we can get him dunked in. So you put that one down. Why can't you do that to the baby? No, put that down. Okay, get the baby Jesus. No, put this down. Come here, baby Jesus. Get in there. Jesus. Get it. Fuck. Get it. Ugh. Fuck this shit. Oh, Joseph. Bye. I can't leave and fucking suck. <laughs> what? What did they even want me to do? <laughs> like, just throw everything around? I'll be a freaking basketball gamer. I used to play basketball when I was a wee lad. Basketball used to be one of my original passwords as a kid. My grandma was like, "What do you want as your password for you for your new AOL account?" I'm like, I don't know, Grandma. Oh, well, what do you like? Uh, basketball? Okay, it could be basketball. Not a good password, Grandma. But it was my password for it, but... Christ, which password is basketball confirmed? Shit. You're on to me. Can I dunk Jesus? I think that might be sacrilegious. Jeez. Us. Uh, fuck. From behind the court! Get dunked on! Alright. I did it. I'm really curious, though. Welcome, me! Next, Mr. Siltron suggested we make it a real game and see how quickly I could score 10 baskets. <gasps> I enjoyed this so much. It felt just like the good old days. Aww. <laughs> Except Mr. Siltron wasn't as forgiving as the old man. I miss doors sometimes. Oh god. Have a good one, Jesus. I've been live for two hours? Guys! B-Break? I am thirsty. And he's- wait, I'm dumb. I realized I couldn't be in here last time. Did I miss a door somewhere, chat? I don't want to leave until I know where to go first. Because then I can- oh, it's- Alright, so we're gonna go pee now. 
Uh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Shadoki, very much, by the way. And Chubby Nope Potato. And Midnight of Maiden. Okay. <gasps> Hello. Something caught my eye. It's a small yellow sphere. The book next to it explained that it was a shield that would automatically take a hit for me when activated. The Y button took the shield in and out of storage, meaning I could save it for when the going got tough. It seemed that I started with two slots to carry shields, but I could upgrade to be able to carry more. <sighs> if both I and the shield died in the same room, the Lazarus chip would bring us both back. It's almost as if the shield needed its sacrifice to mean something. It felt like a true friend, proving that even the simplest of faces can bring out an emotional reaction. Ah! Like the sub guy face. It brings out the reaction of repulsion. Oh god, I didn't mean to! <laughs> yeah! I know where we are today. A boy! Hi, boy. Welcome Wait, back. I should try picking that up. Yeah! Excellent. Okay, buddy, check this out. It's called jumping over your problems. <gasps> no, boy! Sometimes you just don't jump far enough. And that's the lesson we learned today. I'm so sorry, everyone, that had to be witness to boy boys back I forgot where I was going though oh shit this whole way huh <laughs> dude once the perspective shifts it's so hard to keep up sometimes Yo, I just realized, this game is just like a a super cute metroidvania kind of, huh? Just a little bit more linear. Because there's a lot more to it as well. Oh god, no! No! Boys! I'm so sorry! I'm so sorry. Alright. Let's do it. Just like that, we humble AF, we getting right back to work. We don't need no like. Thank you for killing the demon, uh, d demon, demon dandelion. Dude, nice freaking shot, brother man. I am so proud of you. I didn't even plan for that. Good for you. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, what's up, Angel? How you doing, boo-boo? No, you know what? I would have to lose a boy to do it. I think. Other than... Yeah. I don't believe I'd make this jump. Alright. Uh... I don't know if that's worth... But we'll do our best. Let's try. I'm sorry, boy. I'll miss you. You know what? <laughs> Is someone outside my door? I swear I'm hearing shit. Do you think you could find it? Okay, do you think you can find it in your heart to forgive little old me for his obvious transgressions towards your uh, capabilities of believing that I can handle the game button pressings uh, currently? Okay. No? Oh, that's fair. 
That's fair. I, I get it. I understand. I was looking at... You know what? We all need to put our hands together. Okay, let's all put our hands on the screen, okay? Everyone, group, group, group hand touch, okay? On the count of three, okay? One, two, three, gaming gods. Okay, let's do it. Obviously, one of you probably said gaming frauds. So I'm gonna need us to do a retake, okay? All right, redo. Come on, come on, come on. All right, hands in, hands in, all right? One, two, three, gaming gods. All right, let's try again. We got a boy! See, it's because we all did it with unison and power. Good freaking job, gaming gods. Thank you, guys. I knew you could do it. Nice. Good job. It all worked out. When the going gets tough, you just gotta keep pressing the buttons. Why did I do that? No! One, two, three, gaming guys. They gave me a free boy. The boy counts as, I guess, as a Luigi if we're playing Mario rules. He's when Luigi takes over and does the level for you because, god damn it, you just can't do it. And all your friends. Oh no! And all your friends that come over and they're like, yo, what's your progress on the latest Dark Souls game, man? What's your, what's your, what's your progress, man? How many bo- FUCK! How many bosses you down, dog? And then you say to them, uh, Well, I, I mean, like, you know, I got the one with the- uh, <laughs> like, a, like a fucking demon. <laughs> oh, yeah, so you're on, like, fucking, like, a clothes, clothes trouter? What? Yeah, so you, you got through the Temple of Magnus. Fuck! You got through the Temple of Magnus, right? What? Yeah, you, you so you fucking, you got the, the Pentamultimium. The, that, yeah? And you just gotta sit there and just try to pretend you know what the fuck he's saying. Because all that is gibberish to you, because your bitch ass never got out of the third boss. You got stuck on some stupid mechanic, and then you're just like, God, this is stupid. Fuck! This is stupid, so you just couldn't handle it anymore. You just gave up and went back to Club Penguin. Fuck! All right, you went back to a good game. You know, a game that, you know, you were having fun with. You know, a, a sweet time. You know what I like about this game? Is if, fuck, if it's shit, if it's shit gets rough, you know, you just change perspectives. As soon as you change perspectives, you know, it's a whole new take on everything again. It's great. It, it, it is one of the best things you can do if you ever get caught in a rut where you don't think you can pull out You want to pull out first off second off sometimes you just want to change perspectives Okay But you understand where I'm going with this so good on you guys like well done Did I say well done? Okay. Well done uh, Everyone golf clap good job God. Whenever you guys think of Jund, do you think of that emote? That's what I think of when I think of Jund. Fucking, I loved that. Oh, I jumped into it like a fool. Oh my God. It's a law created. I got two boys. Gaming gods, guys. 
Gaming gods. I... <laughs> Anyway, I'm actually quite enjoying this game. I don't know if you guys know this. I... Wait, can I walk on these but just not touch the... Oh, okay. Got you. I get it. I get it. Just that easy, guys. So simp. I haven't seen 13 Goat in so long. Dude, 13 Goat sounds like a really good spinoff. Boy! Hi, boy. Let's go. Where'd boy go? What? Boy! Uh... Uh, oh god. That's so weird. What? What the fuck? I broke it. Chat. I'm pressing Y to do that, but... I... That's insane. I actually broke it. I broke the game somehow. Crazy. job gamers we did it we broke a game ah. you can disable the shield so you don't waste it by accident oh that's pretty cool thank you for letting me know though know the combo all right listen Fuck. listen combos are for street fighter players we are smash brother players all we know is forward smash tell, me about it. tell you about that fuck tell you about that and side smash side smash is You're cute. You're cute. <laughs> okay, cry, but competitive smash requires a bit of combos, too. Oh, I mean, yeah, but we're not competitive. We're freaking normies. Oh, God! Why is there so much electricity? Well, you see, in the future... Uh, electro- Fuck, I did it again the exact same way I died. Oh god. In the future, electricity is utilized, uh, for- For like, you know, uh... I got nothing actually, that's a- Fuck. I got no way to explain that. Go up top? <gasps> You're a fuck. Okay, I could have jumped. Yo. Please stop dying, Mr. Streamer. There's kids watching. You're right. I'm sorry, kids. What? There's kids that are gonna have nightmares from that one. I'm sorry. What? Sorry. The old man was pointing an even older gun right at Mr. Silton's face. But the man looked terrified when he saw me. I can still picture his hands shaking as he reloaded his ancient firearm. This wasn't the plan, shouted Mr. Silton. It's him, or me. Let him have it. Oh god. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry. Oh god, I'm dead. No. No. Oh god. Oh god. I feel like this is a bad crime. Fug. 
I'm sorry. I didn't know what I was going to do when I caught the old man. We're criming right now. Huh? Oh God! Fest 24. Stop Thank you. Stop him. Shit! That was super generous to me. Thank you. I'm gonna kill this old man just for you. If someone dared hurt my friends, Fuck. they would have to pay. Well, then my dumb ass goes and freaking tries to clean off a freaking sparkler that dropped in the sand right after it got done sparkling. Ooh, ow, that shit really hurt. Stupid ass. deleted him what that's like the scariest x-men mutant power we've ever seen it's worse than rogues we're the baddies now Draxer, this game is fucking dope. I let people know that you suggested this to me. Very good, uh, very good taste, my dude. -er. Very good shit. Fucking A. I love that they just go for a 3D thing right here. They haven't done that at all until just right now, just because they want to. Because indie games, there is no formula they have to follow. That's dope. <sighs> I kept turning the events over in my mind. Could I have handled things differently? Could I save Mr. Silton without hurting that man? Mr. Preston could see I was upset, and said music was a good alternative to facing up to problems. Come with me, he insisted, I'm going to teach you how to play drums. First, he said, just play the bass drum along with me, we'll see how good your timing is. Okay. Let's, oh, okay. Give each drum a hit, okay. Let's do it, gamer. Let's do it. Time to rock out with our cog out.
That was tough. Shit. Well, hey, now you I fucked got, whoa. up. Yo. Nice timing. First off. I had some extra bits, so here. Thanks for all the good times. Oh, shit. Thank you very much, Thess. That was also on top of the 2750 from earlier. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate that. I'm glad you're having a good time. Been a long time since I popped by. Glad to see things are going well. Happy you're enjoying the game. Fun to watch. Boo. Nice to hear you again cry. Thank you very much, man. Appreciate you stopping by. C for Gamer God, dude. You, you right. You are not wrong. Mr. Silton was patched up, but still pretty angry. He referred to the man as a word that wasn't in my dictionary file. It should have been between cami and cup. <laughs> I reminded Mr. Silton about going to find the others now we had the van. But he said there was something even more important we had to do first. Mr. Silton explained that it was a good idea that Mr. Logan be released from prison early, and that this wouldn't involve a parole board, but might involve dynamite. Straight away I was apprehensive. I thought only bad people went to prison, I knew Mr. Logan was the guitarist in Mr. Silton's band, but why would we help a bad person? In the end, I think it's only Mrs. Silton's smile that convinced me to help. Mrs. Silton promised to have a present for us when we got back. She said she'd been saving her money from her decorating job. I didn't know what I would need money for, but then realized, if nothing else, new games consoles must be out. Be yeah, careful, right? Said Mrs. Silton with a big smile. Don't rob any post offices, and don't get shot. In the dead of night, it was surprisingly easy to get close to the prison building. Mr. Silton said it was like the Death Star and had a weakness we could exploit. Although I seem to remember the robot getting shot when they did that in the film. But there was no time to worry as Mr. Silton pressed a walkie-talkie into my hand and said, Good luck. Thank you, Mr. Silton. A false friend and a shadow attend only while the sun shines. Chapter 6 Friends aren't always what they seem. Remember that, chat. Never forget. Never forget. <laughs> Don't tell Mr. Silton, he'll laugh at me. All right, we're gonna hide and let the stars go away, like in GTA. Fuck! <laughs> I don't even know what got me. <laughs> oh, God damn it! Oh, that cannon shot me. Okay. You? No. You? No. Unsurprisingly, Mr. Logan's cell was locked, but, thanks to my speedy brain, I was able to hack it in seconds. Mr. Logan was not pleased to see me. No one ever was. But I couldn't work out why. However, when I mentioned Mr. Silton, he soon cheered up. We quickly made our way outside. Although I wasn't sure about Mr. Logan's stealth techniques, they were quite different from mine. Oh. But, someone must have noticed Mr. Logan was missing. As, with a bright flash, <sighs> we were soon attacked. Oh god. This still wasn't the plan, said Mr. Silton as he insisted he was okay, and that, no, I didn't need to clean up the trail of blood. He did however urge me to take care of the huge tank bearing down on us. Oh. Oh god. As you wish, Mr. Silton. My best friend. Best friend. Huh, huh, huh. Sorry. I'll be back. Oh boy. Oh boy. Let's do it. Huh. Yeah. Go down. Huh. Mr. S 
Axel! You need to stop getting shot, my duder. Let's go! <laughs> piled into the van. <clears throat> Mr. Logan and Mr. Preston took out large guns as Mr. Silton gave me some driving software. It basically explained that one foot pump made the van go, <gasps> and the other one signaled Mr. Logan and Preston to fire their guns. Oh, okay. Uh. Oh god. So, uh, I don't remember what the other button was. I just have to shoot. But I'm shooting. X. I don't know what X is doing. It ain't doing nothing for me right now. But that's okay, I guess. To go forward? All right, well, we're definitely going forward. Oh, I guess it's a speed up. Its fired led to non-fatal wounds, but statistically that was incredibly unlikely. <laughs> Strangely, I felt too excited and relieved to care. Mr. Silton winced as he clutched his bleeding shoulder and explained how you can't make an omelette without breaking a few eggs. I think broken eggs meant dead people. Aww. Sometimes, he said, you have to do whatever it takes to survive, even if that means killing. But not innocent people, said Mr. Logan as he stared straight ahead. Eventually, I asked Mr. Logan what he had done to end up in prison, but he just continued staring out of the window. Mr. Preston smiled as he said, I suppose someone should explain. He told me when the war started, he and Mr. Silton had avoided conscription, but Mr. Logan was called up. His unit's first orders were to sweep through a huge urban area, killing anything that moved. The only trouble was, hundreds of refugees had recently taken shelter there. The generals knew that those people were there, said Mr. Preston, but they couldn't have cared less. This isn't the time for another one of your conspiracy theories, interrupted Mr. Silton. Although this obviously annoyed Mr. Preston, he continued explaining how Mr. Logan and another man deserted, and, after a poor attempt to hide in a wooden vaulting horse, the pair of them were caught at gunpoint on a train, whilst trying to speak rudimentary German. Mr. Logan guided us down a small side street as Mr. Preston complained that he needed the toilet. Mr. Silton asked why we were taking the scenic route while he was trying not to bleed to death. But Mr. Logan gave Mr. Silton a quick glance. You're fine, he said with the faintest of smiles. Soon the night sky was full of twinkling stars and I was able to impress everyone with my navigation skills. The software was state of the art, but I remember Heather telling me how the ancients had used the stars in much the same way. It always made me smile, thinking about the names she gave the constellations. It was the middle of the night by the time we got back, but Mrs. Silton was still up waiting for us. Really, again, in the same place, was all she said as she shook her head and tended to Mr. Silton's second bullet wound. 
Mr. Preston nearly knocked us over as he sprinted towards the bathroom. It appeared that his body had kept on making urine, even though it didn't have anywhere left to store it. <laughs> I asked Mr. Silton about Heather and the old lady, but he said he was just about to wash his hair. When I asked him again later, he said the main thing was that we'd got Logan and the van back, and couldn't the rest wait until I had cleaned up the band room for him. I didn't know what to say. Everything we had done, everything I had helped him with, I thought it was all to get everyone back together. But now I didn't know what to think. Before I could say anything, Mrs. Silton explained that it was okay if I only traveled on trains and was alone. I must have looked worried as Mrs. Silton smiled and continued, If you really want these idiots to go with you, they can disguise themselves and catch the next train after you. Mr. Silton was dismissive, and said I'd get nowhere without proper ID. They'll be stopping robots for even the tiniest of things, he said. And a robot passport costs a fortune these days. Well, said Mrs. Silton, it's a good job I've got this. Mr. Silton looked confused and asked where Mrs. Silton got the money. Sometimes, said Mrs. Silton, when God slams a door in your face and shoots you twice in the shoulder, he opens a window. Mrs. Silton explained how Preston had given her the extra money. He said there was good money to be made selling pills and powder to people that distracted them from the world being an absolute mess. Bedtime, said Mr. Logan as he carried his guitar into his room. Everyone else left one by one, leaving me stroking the dog. Been there, man. Huh. Of course. So, so, so sorry. I awake to the sound of Mrs. Silton making herself some breakfast. It felt very early, but I suppose it was just that we had gotten so late. Mrs. Silton gulped down her coffee, and with a reassuring smile she said, Let's do this. Yeah, the sensitivity is really high. <laughs> Mrs. Silton, you're the best. The pedestrian tunnel was far longer than I expected, but it was nice. It gave me a chance to chat with Mrs. Silton. Come, Mrs. Silton. As I clean up. <gasps> hey, look. It's Luigi. She told me she was from an upper-class family, and that her parents had nearly disowned her when she married Mr. Sidden. But she said she really was happy being with her husband. And after all, as she put it, he did provide for her in this messed up world. However, I couldn't help but laugh when she said how much she liked Mr. Silton's band. <laughs> I steered the conversation onto the topic of the war. She explained she had been a nurse near some major combat, but she looked really sad, so I changed the subject. I asked her if the town was nice. Mrs. Silton smiled, and described it as a wretched hive of scum and villainy. Doesn't sound very chill at all. Mrs. Silton, you're the best. Mm -hmm. 
Sorry, ma'am. You understand how it is. Train tickets cost 1,000. So Mrs. Silton said I should trade in some of the things I'd cleaned so I could afford to travel. <gasps> However, when we tried the door, it was apparent that the junkyard owner wouldn't be back for a while. So Mrs. Silton suggested I try to earn some money by other means. She said there were plenty of jobs in the town that a robot could do. Ah, this is cute and wholesome as frick. All right, guys, listen. I don't want to do this to you, but it is 10. I'm going to stream tomorrow, this game. I got to stream it tomorrow. It's too it's too cute. So, I got... I, I'm super sorry, guys. I got to stick to the schedule. I have to be an adult. I'm so sorry. But, gamers. A little bit, 10 minutes more? 10 minutes more? Okay. 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 10 minutes more. Assuming that you aren't lying. Oh my god. <gasps> oh god. Chad, I would get engrossed in all these. This is a horrible idea. The, no, Chad, I'm not going to be able to do 10 minutes more. You can't. That is impossible. I would play all of these for at least 20 minutes a pop. Oh. Oh, God, robots. I don't have- that's true. I would need money to play them. Hello? The foreman explained the job to me. I would be making bricks. The world needed rebuilding and these bricks would more than help. He said I would be on the end of the production line and would be shaping the final parts of the bricks. All I had to do was hit the brick in time with everyone else. Okay. I'm sorry. a lot of bucks there hell yeah thanks brick guy any other kind of jobs around town hey 
after post lady explained the job to me, I would be sorting parcels. Many people were now separated by desolate battlefields and needed these care packages to survive. The parcels were either red or blue. I just had to stamp the right ones, with the right color, at the right time. Okay. Oh God. You know, I think I did okay. Yeah! Thank you, ma'am. And I know there's another door, so I'm assuming I can get even more, but yo. Do you want to be friends? We can go to the movies and watch some movies, play games together. I like playing video games. I love playing video games. I feel like Horace could use another robot friend. And you see how I said robot friend and not girlfriend? Because just because she's a female robot, she is not obligated to date him, goddammit. Hello? Suddenly, as if by magic, the shopkeeper appeared. Hello, sir. He said, if there's something that catches your eye, just pick it up and bring it over to me. Okay, we're gonna do a bunch of this tomorrow. <laughs> there's, there's just gonna be a bunch of mini games and a bunch of fun times, but it's gonna be later because there's, I, there's too much shit I want to do with it. Is I get what's gonna be happening though. It looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun, so I do look forward to that. We'll do that tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern as well. We'll, we'll hit it up, okay? Eastern the ones. Every now and then it get a little bit better, Lillian, and never become in mind. Turn around. It's disturbing. Every now and then I get a little bit tired of listening to none of my days. Turn around. Every now and then I get a little bit of it.